so this is working all fine. So uh, I'm Nikita. I'm from the Indian Statistical Institute. And thank you very much uh, for giving the opportunity to present this work, which is about the role of digital job search technology in enabling access to work opportunities. And before I start uh, you know, with the evidence, uh, I want to give you a context of where this work is really based. So in India, what we have experienced is a significant improvement uh, when we look at the GDP and the socioeconomic uh, other parameters. But when it comes to the female labor force participation, it continues to remain uh, very low. And it is uh, very, uh, so, uh, it's not just low, it has remained stagnant. Another key feature uh, is that the urban female labor force participation is very low compared to that of the rural female labor force participation. And for this reason, we are going to be focusing on the urban uh, sample. OK. So uh, the big question really is, why are so few women in the labor market, right? So is it that they don't want to join the labor market? Uh, but the answer to that is no, because what we see is that there is a significant latent demand for work by women. If we look at the national sample survey, we see that 33% of the women that are currently not in the labor market, they want to be, uh, they, they are looking for work and they want to find work. Also, another reason why women are not in the labor force is coming from the fact that women have preference for work, which is located close to where they are staying. And this preference for work is coming from the internalization of the fact that women have limited physical mobility, they are constrained by the social norms, and the home production responsibilities, which is majorly borne by the women in these households. Also, there are safety concerns associated with women who have to travel longer distances, and more so when there are very few other women that are traveling with them. Additionally, when it comes to awareness and information about these kind of job opportunity that is missing, especially for women because they do not have access to weak ties. And these weak ties are very important when it comes to referral for job opportunities and also getting access to information about the presence of these job opportunities. And it is, you know, given this background that uh, digital uh, labor market platforms can really play a role because what they can do is reduce the job search cost. And since we expect the job search cost to be higher for women, we expect the benefits coming from adoption of these digital jo uh, job market platforms to be higher for women. And these platforms, uh, they, are, they reduce the matching frictions and therefore can be really beneficial in not only matching people who are not in the labor market, but improving the quality of the match for people who are already in the labor market. But uh, this doesn't go without a caveat, which is that benefits may not actually accrue to women. And the reason for that, again, is, you know, starting with the first difference that these gender differences, right, they are not only in terms of the labor force participation, even when it comes to the adoption of these technologies and access to information about these uh, new technology uh, platforms, that can itself be gendered. Now, uh, there is additionally a possibility of male backlash, especially in the Indian context where there is a prevalent norm wherein uh, men are the ones who are the breadwinners of the household, while women take care of the children. Uh, Another, uh, another thing that has been brought about uh, you know, with the recent strand of literature is about the joint decision making. So if husband and wife are jointly deciding who should be going out and working in the labor market and who stays back and takes care of the children and the domestic chores, given that women have higher returns to home production compared to the returns in the job market, and in fact that was uh, mentioned in uh, the presentation about the gender wage gap, so that might actually lead to women staying back and withdrawing from the labor market. Uh, and this is where the innovation that we have tried in this work is to bring in the role of networks of women. Because if women are treated along with their networks and they're jointly trying to overcome the restrictions that are put in by these social norms, it's going to be easier to do it when they're doing it along with the peers that they're regularly interacting compared to doing it independently uh, or you know, in silos. Uh, but here again, the problem is that when we talk about the social networks of women, most of them are homebound. And it is possible that these networks, in, instead of acting as an enabler, might in fact further constrain their labor force participation by reinforcing the prevalent social norms.
And this is what we are trying to do uh, in this study, which is joint work with Farzana Afridi at Indian Statistical Institute, and Amrita Dillon and Sanchari Roy at King's College London. And the idea is really to have, you know, what we did was uh, collected experimental evidence by a randomized control trial that was done in urban India. And the idea is to understand how getting access to job search technology can improve, uh, you know, access to information about the existing jobs and improve the quality of the matches. And uh, the idea is to also look at the interaction, how the social norms can play a role, especially from a gender perspective. The research questions that uh, we are interested in addressing here is whether, digital, uh, whether access to the technology can enhance the labor market participation, the role that the networks can play, and how the social norms interact with these uh, networks. But for today's presentation, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the first bullet point here, which is how do access to uh, information about the technology help in uh, enhancing the labor force participation of women as well as men. And how we are doing this is uh, designing an intervention that is able to address the demand as well as the supply side factors in the labor market by matching them uh, to potential employers that are locally available. So these are the blue collar jobs uh, that are available close to where these people are staying. So these are local jobs. And the way this platform works is with it's very similar to Uber because depending on where the demand for labor is and the supply for labor is, it matches them on the basis of that. And the way this intervention is working is by reducing the job search cost because the people who are going to be onboarding the portal, they don't have to pay any fee to be on the portal and are matched to uh, potential jobs. Now, uh, coming to the study sample, so I'm not going to go into the detail of the randomization and how, uh, you know, how we are uh, going about with the sampling strategy here, but just to give you an idea of where the sample is coming from, uh, we have focused on the poor urban households uh, from Delhi, and here is uh, so this is the map of Delhi, and we are looking at five districts in Delhi. And from these five districts, we have a sample of 108 polling stations that have been randomly selected. Not going into the details of how we select them, but these 108 polling stations were then assigned to one of the tr three treatment arms that we have. And this gives us 36 clusters for each treatment arm. So the first treatment is having the matched husband and wife pair uh, being given the information about the portal. They were informed that they, this is the portal which is going to match you to potential jobs. Are you interested in onboarding the portal? So that's the first step that we're interested in, whether they are interested in being part of these uh, digital technology in the first place. The second thing was whether they actually registered after showing interest in the portal. And on registration, uh, their preferences of the kind of jobs that they're looking for was recorded and they were matched to potential jobs. And the next stage was to understand what kind of jobs they were matched to, whether they accepted the jobs. If they're not accepting the jobs, why is it that they're not accepting these jobs? Uh, the second treatment on brings in the network uh, wherein we are giving this information to the matched husband and wife pair along with two of the wife's self-reported friends. So this, uh, this is her social network and the idea is to harness the role of social network uh, in not only adoption of the technology but also the usage of this new technology. And uh, in both these uh, treatment arms, uh, we are going to be comparing the impact relative to the pure control group, where we are just collecting information on their labor market participation without giving them any information about the job portal. Uh, in, uh, in our sample, we have focused exclusively on married couples because the idea is to understand the intra-household dynamics. So we have the matched husband and wife pair. And in this matched husband and wife pair, we have exclusively focused on the age group of 18 to 45 years because this is the age bracket where, you know, they are more active in the labor market and also women who are married women in this age bracket, they're also going to have domestic uh, burdens, including childcare and elderly care responsibilities. Now, given this uh, sample, coming to uh, you know a brief of the timeline of the study, we started the data collection, and, uh, the baseline collection in mid 2019, and we rolled out the intervention uh, by end of 2019. And right after that, we had the nationwide pandemic lockdown. And as you all know, India had one of the worst cases, and in fact, the strictest lockdown. So when we started with the first end line, which was six months after the lockdown was just uplifted in August 2020, we are not finding any significant impacts here because uh, there were no new jobs that were created during this 
phase. And we are, uh, for today's presentation, I'm going to be exclusively focusing on the second end line, which was performed uh, after one year of rolling out the intervention. And the intervention was, you know, giving information about the portal. Okay, coming to the estimation strategy, we are following a very standard estimation strategy and the two variables, are the, the two coefficients that you should be looking out for are the betas here because they are going to give us the impact of the first treatment which is just the husband and wife pair without the network treatment and the second treatment which is the husband and wife along with the network. And uh, in all our specifications, we are having controls for the baseline characteristics because uh, this is the ENCOVA specification wherein we want to control for any differences at the baseline. Also, given that this is a randomized controlled trial, we have, we have the balance checks and everything, but I'm not going to go into those details uh, for this presentation. Uh, but what I do want to, uh, uh, you know, highlight here is in the what is the baseline characteristics of the sample that we are looking at, and uh, what we see is that 96% of the husbands in our sample are already working, and only 24% of the wife in our sample are working. So. Uh, most of the women uh, who we are serving, they are, not in the, they are not currently engaged in the labor market. And of the 24% who are working, only, most of them are engaged in self-employed work. So this self-employment is uh, you know, the work which they can do from the uh, households, right? So most of them are operating from the premises of their household. And this is, uh, again, uh, comes, uh, you know, this again comes in when we look at the job preferences that they have. So, it's important, and I'll you know point out why it's important to focus on the self-employment here. Uh, so, uh, what we did was explicitly asking the husband as well as the wife about the kind of jobs that they want the women to do. So, the husband was asked the job that he wants the wife to be engaged in, and the wife was asked about the job she wants to be engaged in. And we see that there is you know there is a good symmetry in terms of their responses because both of them want to be engaged in salaried work and home-based work. So um, this is why I was, uh, you know, focusing on the self-employment, you know, because the current ongoing norm is to do work from where these, most of these women are based. That is acceptable. So this is the ongoing norm. Uh, in fact, uh, when we look at the people who don't want to do any work, right, so that is very close to zero. So this means that there is a significant latent demand for work. Okay. Now coming to the results, and uh, so right now I'm going to be focusing only on the results on overall employment and the different uh, labor market outcomes that we have. Um, and as I had mentioned before, we don't find anything when we look at end line one. Uh, when we look at end line two, what we are finding is that for the husbands, uh, the probability of being in the labor market is going up by 4.4 percentage point, with no similar impact for the wife or for the treatment without the network. So this impact is observed only when they are treated, when the husband is treated with the network of the wife. Another interesting point to note here is that when we compare the coefficients, when we compare the impact for treatment two versus treatment one, we find that there is a significant difference between these coefficients for both the husband and the wife. So clearly there are some network effects that are ongoing here. Now coming to the type of employment, while I do not find anything when I look at the overall employment status of the wife, uh, when it's decomposed into types of employment being self-employment, salaried work, and wage labor, there is a significant take up of uh, self-employment by 4.5 percentage point by this wife. So now again, this brings us back to the social norms, right? Because we found that women are already engaged in self-employment and their husbands as well as the wife want to do work which can be performed from home. And even when uh, they are provided with this intervention, the wife that are treated along with the network, they end up taking self-employment. So they are you know, even with the intervention and having access to other job opportunities which are not self-employment, they end up conforming to the norm of doing self-employment. The husbands, on the other hand, are benefiting from the portal and taking up uh, other employments. Now coming to what is happening on the intensive margin. So similar to the results on the extensive margin, I'm finding that uh, their days, their work days are going up by 55%. And note here again that the coefficient for treatment with the network is significantly higher compared to treatment without the network. Uh, and the same result when I look at the number of hours, uh, which are going up by 58%. So clearly, men, 
when, are when, uh, when they are treated along with the network, are taking part uh, on the extensive as well as the intensive margin more. And this raises a natural question as to what happens to the household welfare, right? It doesn't matter whether the husband works, the wife works, as long as the household income is going up. So as a natural follow-up, we look at what is happening to the monthly earnings of the individual members, so what happens to the earning of the husband and the wife. And what, um, what we find here is that the the husband's earnings, when they're treated along with the network, they are more than doubling. And again, note here that uh, treatment two coefficients are again higher. So this means that the income in treatment two, where the treatment is given along with the network, is having higher earnings for the husband as well as the wife compared to uh, the treatment where uh, this is given. This treatment is given without the network compared to the control group where no information was given. Another interesting point is uh, it's not just about work, because if we talk about Sustainable Development Goal 8, it's about having decent work opportunities. And that is where this intervention was really you know, able to um, shed some light, because when we look at the, ki the type of earnings that uh, these husbands who are you know, taking part more in the labor market, so what's really going on? Because already 96% of them were engaged in the labor market. And what we find is that they move out in both the treatment arms from piece rate and daily wage rate work, which are more vulnerable and unsecured job types, into the more secure and stable salaried work. So clearly there is an improvement in terms of their, their engagement in the labor market. And that is happening for both the treatment arms. But, uh, okay, so I had, uh, so the thing is, uh, the idea was to look at the mechanisms, right? So why do we observe what we are observing? So there are two key things to take away from here. That one thing is that the treatment two has higher effect compared to treatment one. The second thing is treatment two, which is treatment with the network, works only for the husband and it doesn't work for the wife. So why is that happening? So we have multiple uh, mechanisms to explain that and uh, most of them were, you know, uh, they were not able to justify this because we find uh, that uh, the husbands, right, so when it comes to the norms, they were improving for both with the intervention for both the treatment arms. And uh, we are finding greater adoption of the technology when you are treated along with the network. But coming to the question of why only husbands benefit from it, why not wife? Because wife have lower job search cost. So theoretically, you would expect greater benefit there. And the answer lies in uh, the demand side, the gendered preferences that they had. Because when we look at the registration data, we find that women are throwing a very narrow uh, net in search of work because they want, uh, they restrict to very few job types. They want to travel a very short distance compared to their husband. Also, another very interesting point here was in terms of the mismatch, because when we look at the expectation, right, they are expecting 10,000 uh, Indian rupees of, from working on the portal. But if you look at women who are already in the labor market, this is the last slide, sir. Uh, when you look at women who are already in the labor market, they are earning only 4,500. So they are expecting over 50% higher income, uh, higher earnings on joining the portal. But it's because of this mismatch that they were not offered as many off job offers from the portal as compared to the husbands who were throwing a wider net in terms of the job profiles, the distance they were willing to travel, and also the salary expectations were very much aligned with what is being offered in the labor market. And uh, the key learning from this study is that these platforms, they can help in improving the employment opportunities, the earnings, as well as a shift towards more secure jobs, but it is important to incorporate the network that they have when you are thinking about policies to introduce these kind of digital job platforms. And with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.